Okay. Is your mic working? I think so. You know, if we were able to do this in the studio, we'd have the jellyfish crew to help us out. Maybe bring us some snacks too? Yeah, but we're here for something more important than splatfests and map rotations. We have to get the word out about all this other stuff. You know we're live, right? Oh, whoops. Hello, Inklings and Octolings. Welcome to Merry After Midnight. Tonight's episode, The Secrets of the New Squidbeak Splatoon Revealed. This is Mary. And her underling shiver! You know, just because I'm your boss doesn't mean you have to call yourself an underling. But I like calling myself your underling. Fry and Big Man are my underlings, and I'm your underling, so we bond better with the feeling of having someone superior to you. Anyway, aren't we supposed to be a secret society? Well, yeah, but after that whole debacle with the mammalians, I figure people should know what's going on. Do you mean when the bear launched itself into space? Yes, but it also has to do with the loss of the great zapfish. Also, the bear's name is Mr. Grizz. Haven't you been reading the reports? Um, well, I was kind of busy feeding my sharks, and I honestly hadn't had the time. By the way, did the captain say it's okay to tell everyone what's going on? Oh, the captain gave a thumbs up, so I figure it's fine as long as we keep it vague. So we can say Mr. Grizz went on the rocket ship to space before getting blasted by Agent 3, and sending the whole thing back to orbit. Yeah, but you're forgetting about his evil plan to make everyone on the planet mammals. Oh yeah. Didn't want my sharks to get hairy. So it's good that we did that. Well, Agent 3 did that. You stole some of the stuff we needed to get to the space rocket. Stole is a very harsh word for what we did. We were just doing some harmless looting from a long-dead civilization to help out the Splatlands. Besides, you gave us that stuff after you were done using it. Yeah, that's true. So what else do we need to talk about? Well, we kind of already got through everything we needed to tell everyone. I can't really think of anything else to say other than give an open invitation to anyone listening to join the new Squidbeak's platoon. Honestly, recruiting whoever goes into a manhole isn't exactly the best strategy. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's only been a couple of minutes. We need to make the podcast longer or else it ruins the entire purpose of having a podcast. Why does it need to be longer? Well, the purpose of a podcast is to have it going on in the background while you're doing other stuff. People prefer longer podcasts so they can have it running in the background for quite a while. Do you have any suggestions on what else we should talk about? How about what led to the new Squad Beak Platoon? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so Captain Cuttlefish, my grandpa, was in the original Squid Beaks platoon. But when the Great Turf War ended, Captain Cuttlefish knew there would need to be some defense in case DJ Octavio tried anything again. Um, didn't DJ Octavio help us fight the space bear? Okay, one, his name is Mr. Grizz. Two, don't confuse having him as an ally means he's gonna be nice to us. Last couple times he tried something, we put him in a snow globe, so I don't think he's gonna help us out in the future. Wait, how did you fit him a snow globe? Wouldn't it have gotten really cramped? It was a big one. Big one. Oh, okay, but it seems like any big threats are out of the way for a while. Well, yeah, but there's still threats from space that we need to keep an eye on. Like what? Well, you know those little plant guys that steal trash? Oh, yeah, those guys are super convenient. I just leave trash all over my house and watch as they come to pick it up. I have to stay out of their eyesight, though. I don't want to panic them. I saw a blue one, and a white one, and even a pink one that could fly. I think they evolved from fish. Not too sure you should be leaving trash all over your house. But yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Anyway, I think they're being tamed by aliens. Aliens? You mean like the Memelians? No, these aliens are about the same size as the plant guys. I don't know what their deal is, but they keep popping up and taking stuff. Well, I feel like it's not that big of a deal. I mean, they just steal trash. Well, some of it is stuff like gold and fruit. 
Not all of it is valuable, but some of it is. Okay, so why don't we just talk to the little aliens? What do they look like? Well, they look like little astronauts. Okay, so they're little astronauts. Any other noticeable features? Well, they have a little light on their head, and sometimes they use a whistle. Oh, you know what? I think I saw one a little bit ago. They were using a sandcastle I built as a base for an expedition. Yeah, they do that a lot. It's pretty easy to get them when their only hope of escape is a rocket ship that fits in your hand like a toy. But I put a bunch of microphones around their base to record them, and their language is completely different from ours. Well, maybe we can decipher the language? That would take quite a while to do. Besides, what if we scare them off the moment they see us? They're less than an inch tall, and even if they don't run at the sight of one of us, we'd need a lot of tech to even hold a conversation with them. Well, we can get microphones tailored to talk to them, and I know how to talk to people who speak a different language. Me and Big have an understanding. Well, that man is Big, so it's not hard to hold a conversation with him. These aliens are smaller than sushi rolls. Oh, I'm sure I'll be fine. What's the worst I can do? Throw a plant at us? Well, we don't know where these aliens came from. They could have an armada at the ready the moment they see us. I doubt it, but it's funny that you mention that. I actually have a theory of where they came from. And what's that? They are humans who escaped in different spaceships when the world ended and evolved to adapt to their new planet. Maybe they used gene editing to make themselves smaller so they could survive a planet with far greater gravitational force than Earth. Wow, did not expect you to know about gene editing. Well... I have to do something to pass the time in between Splatfest. Oh yeah, speaking of Splatsville, I heard you won a lot of Splatfest recently. Recently? <laughs> oh no no no, I've been winning Splatfest for quite a while now. In fact, I've won 9 out of 13 Splatfests I've been a part of. Wow, you're on track to beat everyone else's score. Yeah, but we still got over a year of Splatfest to go, and the era of Shiva is just starting. My Shiv Premacy will make it so I can challenge even Marina's Splatfest score. That'll be extremely impressive, especially considering that Marina and Pearl got two extra years of Splatfest. Well, after I'm done with Splatfest, the era of Shiva will be eternal. You're really trying to push this era of Shiva thing, aren't ya? Oh? I'm going to be the replacement for Captain Cuttlefish next time the Great Zapfish gets stolen. Obviously, there's detractors in the higher-ups who don't want me to win. That's why they changed my team from vampires to zombie doing Splatoon Ween. But I'm certain followers of the Shiv Pemacy will <laughs> change their minds. Good golly, am I glad I don't have to deal with those Splatfests anymore. Oh? You're not doing Splatfest anymore? I mean, yeah, me and Callie do the little dances over in Splatfield during Splatfest, but I won the last Splatfest and then Callie got hypnotized by some sunglasses, then we had to get Agent 4 to do something about it. It was a whole thing, and quite frankly, I'm extremely tired of doing Splatfests. I just want to sing on stage and wear cute outfits. Agent 4? I heard of Agent 3, but I never knew there was an Agent 4. Yeah, they're off doing some stuff. I don't really keep track of them. Anyway, how'd you celebrate Frosty Fest? Yeah, I was eating nothing but Wendy's chocolate Frosties to prepare for the Frosty Fest. But you lost to Big Man. Who knew that everyone wants to celebrate the holidays alone? Well, it wasn't really about people preference that wins a Splat Fest. Big Man won the Frosty Fest by eating the strawberry Frosties. Everyone knows that the Strawberry Frosty beats everything else, even gods. Anyway, what have you been doing post Splatfest? I've been reading a lot of One Piece. Oh, One Piece? Isn't that the story from an ancient civilization? Yeah, I keep it right next to the Odyssey by Homer. So, why don't you tell us what happens? Well, I'm not done with it. I only made it up to chapter 1098, and there's a lot more to go. I made it to the final saga, though. Well, just tell about what you read so far. I was reading that book since I was a wee babe, so I might be able to fill in some of the plot. 
To start off with, it's about pirates, right? Yes, but it's mainly about Luffy. Well, yeah, Luffy's the main character. He was turned into a boy after eating the Gomu Gomu fruit. After he ate the devil fruit, he lost the ability to swim. Well, did you know that Luffy got his dream to become king of the pirates after Shanks saved him? Yes. Well, why don't you start us with the plot and then I'll take over when you end. Okay, so Luffy starts to get a crew out of the East Blue- uh, Actually, hold off on that for now. We've got to do an ad break. An ad break? Well, I do like money. Yeah, but Callie bought the equipment, so she got to pick the advertisements and get 60% of the advertisement income. Let's see here. Shiver, you got your ad read sheet? Hold on, just give me a second. Today's podcast has been sponsored, the amazing Digital Circus Oath of Liberation, folks. If you're like me and saw the amazing Digital Circus, you'll know that we gotta get those people out of that computer. So, the members of Ted Core have promised to find the computer the people are trapped in by going into all the buildings and making sure none of the computers have people inside of them. Then, when we find the computer with them in it, We'll put them in either the original bodies or robot bodies, if it's a Black Mirror upload rather than a Tron upload. What's the difference? Well, a Tron upload is somebody's entire body getting uploaded to the thing. But what if it's just people in pods like the Matrix? Well, then we just open up the pods, simple as that. But wait, isn't that just a show on the computer? Yes, it is on the computer, which is where we are trying to get them out of. No, I mean that it's a work of fiction. Like, the characters that are trapped on the computer are just fictional characters that don't actually exist. Um... That's not in the script. Oh, wait, there's something on the back here. It says, Until the series comes, we're gonna make a resolution to the cliffhanger that we'll say is canonical. Well, that explains their slogan. It's all... Mechanical until the series come out. Well, if you want to save a bunch of characters from a digital hell, go to a website or something and ask the website if they have any people trapped inside it. That'll probably work. Well, that's the ad read. Let me talk about what's- Nope, we've got more sponsors. Oh, uh, well, okay then. I, I do like money. This podcast is also sponsored by Ammo Nights. When you're splatting with your friends, remember Ammo Nights. Don't forget the Ammonite slogan, it's not actually firearms, we're basically selling super soakers. Also sponsored by- wait. It just says ancient lesbian anime on here. Yeah, Callie's been getting into ancient lesbian animes lately. We've been finding a bunch of ancient animes and mangas while exploring the remains of human civilizations. Oh? Like what? Well, she started to watch Romantic Killer. Isn't that the one where the state threatens to torture a lesbian girl and she fights them because she wants to continue to be a lesbian? Yeah, but I wouldn't call it torture. Did they threaten to steal her cat unless she becomes straight? No, they threaten to permanently confiscate her cat unless she gets pregnant. Oh well, yeah, that's just stealing her cat might actually be worse since you could interpret it as killing the cat. I mean, yeah, fair point. Well, let's hope that Woman to Killer gets a season 2 so that MC can defeat people who hate the LGBT community. I hope that too. We should all definitely watch that anime, even if you like guys. After all, most of the show is just hot guys. Since Netflix has morphed into an AI system that shows stuff to people whenever they want, we should all give it a chance. What other Asian lesbian anime has Kelly been watching? Well, there's also I'm in love with the villainess. That's a good lesbian anime. They also got to the marriage part of the relationship, according to the cover of the third book. Isn't that a spoiler? I don't think so. Most people would see the cover of the book. Also, I'm not sure if they actually got married and had kids. They had kids? Maybe? I don't know. Probably. I'm not reading the book. The show's pretty good, though. We'll find out when more seasons of the anime get made. You mean when we find more seasons of the anime from ancient human civilizations, right? Right. Keep forgetting that we're in the future. 
well, Callie's been watching that Hundred Girlfriends anime, but that's more about how all the girls this guy dates are also dating each other while dating him. So it's more like an anime about bisexuality. You know you're making these anime sound like you're the one watching all of them? What? No, no, no. I I'm just, uh, watching it because Callie's watching it. Also, the handwriting in the ad read script is different for the ancient lesbian anime. No, it's not. Look, Moe, it's okay to be interested in anime. Nobody here is gonna judge you. No. No, the only anime I watch is One Piece. And Dragon Ball. And Assassination Classroom. And Odd Taxi. Well, I think- Also Ensemble Stars in Fairy Tale. Well, Can't I- Can't forget about Agretzko and Gurren Lagann. May I speak now? Sure. Maybe I should just make a list of all the anime I watch. Give me a sec. Okay, so I also want to throw in a sponsor. Isn't the sponsor supposed to be paying us? I don't think we're getting paid by the sponsor. I'm pretty sure Kelly's just giving us shirts and hats to do shoutouts at this point. Oh, okay. Keep writing that list, though. It's already pretty long, and I want to see what the complete list looks like. Can do. At this time, I feel like it's prudent to talk about the Church of Supremacy. Wait, what? Just keep writing, Moe. Fine. I'll step in if it gets too weird. Friends, are you feeling down? Thinking the whole world is against you? Well, here at Church of Supremacy, we say I, Shiva, personally control the world. So, if you join my church and worship me as a shrike goddess, I'll change the world so it's not against you. My constant wins doing Splatfest prove I am the shrike goddess. Any losses during Splatfest was because of sabotage by the enemies of the Supremacy or because Wendy's Strawberry Frosty is more powerful to rival a god like myself. We must not treat these enemies of the Chef Primacy as hostile, but rather teach them how I am the Shark Goddess and deserve to win any Splatfest that does not involve any items from a fast food menu. You know, I'm still writing, but I'm just gonna 100% confirm everything that Shiver's saying. I saw her true power, and I'm absolutely positive she's the Shark Goddess. She used those godly powers to save my grandfather from the clutches of death. Yeah, it was a whole thing. The space bear kidnapped Moe's grandpa and made him all dehydrated. Then the captain cried on him. I put my godly powers into the captain's tail to bring that old man back to life. Thanks for that, by the way. I forgot to thank you because the space bear was going to do the evil thing and the main focus was stopping him. Yeah, don't worry. One of the main tenets of the chef primacy is forgiveness. What are the other main tenets, by the way? Well, there's acceptance, peace, love, forgiveness, and freedom for everyone as long as they don't use those freedoms to hurt anyone else. If they do, I swoop in, give them a stern talking to. Wait, swoop in? So you're saying you can fly? Sure. I'm certain some of my god's power can let me do that. I always control reality as if it's a toy I can mold and shape however I see fit. So, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to fly. Maybe I have the power to bring humanity back to life and put them all in a little glass jar so they don't destroy the world again. Just like you did with DJ Octavio. Wait, can you do that? Well, I mean, yeah, but I don't know if I want to. I mean, it'd make more sense to keep them contained rather than just letting them wander around freely. You know what? Sure, I'll do that. Hold on, let me make it happen. There we go. All of humanity is in this little glass jar on the table. Every member of humanity that has ever existed has come back to life, and now exists in this little glass jar. Can they breathe okay? Oh, sorry. I meant I made a universe for them. Put humanity in that universe, then put the universe in this little glass jar. Sorry if there was some confusion. Can they hear us? If you want them to, they can. 
Nah, honestly, I figured they'd all go mad from the revelation that their souls are all now forever trapped in a tiny jar by a species that evolved to be definitively better than them. Don't worry, they got video games and stuff in there. It's not like I didn't put a bunch of cool stuff in there to distract them from the fact that I now own all of them. I am the Shrike Goddess, after all. Everyone knows the Shrike Goddess is nice. That's true, you are the Shark Goddess. Hey, if you could do all that, why not save the people trapped in the amazing digital circus? Actually, I already did that. They're also human, so I put them in the little glass jar with their real bodies. Wow, that is impressive. Not only that, but it's 100% canon until someone says it isn't. Yes, it certainly is completely canon until stated otherwise. So, go ahead, become a follower of the Church of Supremacy today. All tastes are accepted, and the even fan art of me. This was all still the ad read. Alright, we're done with the ads. So, Shiver, do you remember what we were talking about? Honestly, no idea. I think we were talking about Star Wars or something. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure it's not important. Anyway, how's the rest of Deep Cut doing? Oh great, we had a big fight recently on who was the leader of the group after Big Man went and branched out. Then we realized there wasn't a lot of placement for our trio and decided that we needed to figure out who among us is the leader. Then the leader who decided who is the bad boy and who is the innocently lovable sweetheart. Alright, who's the sweetheart? I think you know it's Big Man. So Fry's the bad boy of the group? Yeah, because that's because she looks the best in a black leather jacket out of the three of us. Can't you be a bad boy without wearing a leather jacket? No. Well, okay then. What else is going on? Um... Oh, did you see the news about the Tower of Order in the memeverse? I heard that Pearl and Marina are hanging out there. But I'm sure there's just gonna be a side order mission compared to the full course adventure we just gone through. Yeah, but it's something we gotta look into, especially considering I haven't seen the two of them in ages. Well, I can't get into the memeverse. My godly powers are constrained to this planet. Why? Well, I felt like being in charge of a universe seemed like a big responsibility when it's not in a little glass jar you can keep in a joy. I'm just not ready for that kind of commitment. Well, I finished up my anime list like I said I would. Good, let's go ahead and read the list and talk about each of these anime for the rest of the podcast. But what if you haven't watched all the anime on my list? Fortunately, as the shark goddess, I have god powers. I already watched all the anime, read all the light novels, and went through all the manga. Oh, but yeah. Uh, well, let's get this list read and talked about. Okay, hit this podcast with a blunt end of the first anime on that list, sweet girl. One Piece. Fantastic show with a lot of cool stuff that everyone should watch. Cool stuff like what? Well, there's a nation that's made out of sweets and various foods. Yeah, but isn't the reason they were able to build all that is because their citizens are giving up part of their lifespan to stay there? Yeah, but two islands ago there was a country that had a bunch of slaves that used to be regular citizens, but everyone in the world forgot who they were due to a wizard spell. That's way worse. Is it, though? Seems like you're comparing apples and oranges. Well, it's not apples and oranges, it's various genocides that are casually happening and people don't notice. It's weird how there's so many genocide happening all over the world without anybody noticing. It's a good thing that a good guy stops the genocide from happening most of the time. Hopefully the series ends with Luffy stopping all the genocides and slaveries from happening forever by punching someone really hard. That is the current theory of what will happen in the future chapters, yes. It's not in the chapters yet, but hopefully we'll dig more manga out of the ruins of humanity soon. Yeah, I hope they get a 10th crew member. Maybe Julie Bonnie? They already have Vivi. That's 10 crew members if you don't count Luffy. Oda said that Luffy isn't counted in the 10 crew members, so Jinbei is actually the 9th crew member, not the 10th. Okay, but Vivi is currently working behind the scenes to do... something. 
It's really unclear what exactly is going on behind the scenes other than her going into hiding after- Wait, hold on. Don't go spoiling for anyone who hasn't read the manga. Let me think of something. Oh, got it. I sure hope the 12-year-old girl is able to save her dad. Well, how about the fact that global warming exists? Ah, uh, yes, the global warming that is currently happening and destroyed the country. Also, I'm not talking about destroyed as in the collapse in the nation. I'm talking about a country that was there one moment and was replaced by a big hole in the ocean that somehow never fills. Then, since top members of the government don't want people to know global warming exists, they just said country never existed. Not sure how that's supposed to work, but I've not been the top member of government yet. All I am is a god. Yeah, global warming is just happening and ruining everyone's day. Now ocean levels are rising and it's hurting everybody. It's a whole thing where no matter how many people global warming kills, the heads of the government believe it's an acceptable loss no matter how many people die. I swear the perfect world that global warming supporters want is where everyone that isn't them is dead. We're still talking about One Piece, right? I mean, hopefully this can be resolved by Luffy punching global warming so hard that global warming goes away forever and there's nothing to worry about ever again. But I'm not too sure if that's a good strategy or if there's going to be more steps. Come on, it's One Piece. Of course there's going to be more steps. You're right. What am I saying? The coolest guys in the world are probably going to have a big fight in giant country that will determine who the coolest guy is, with Luffy probably winning that fight and then he punches global warming. Alright, that seems like enough talk about this anime. Let's move on to the next one. Dragon Ball. Yep, an absolute classic. Inklings keep talking about when they'll make a true sequel to Dragon Ball Z. But they already did thousands of years ago. It's called Dragon Ball Super. Well, yeah. But now this would be a continuation from where Dragon Ball Super left off. So, the Dragon Ball movies that happen after Dragon Ball Super? No, no, this would include the movies and probably some more stories. Alright, but what do people want from a new Dragon Ball series? Uh, I don't know. Probably some new fusions, and they just got a couple new allies. Also, Beerus is totally in love with the green alien lady. That is true, she is a green alien lady, but what else does she have going on? What do you mean by going on? She's got the legs going on, if that's what you mean. No, no, I mean like, what are her hobbies? Can't date a god unless you have hobbies. That's the rule. How is that a rule? Well, the full rule is that a moral has to have a hobby so the god can date you. That way, if it's an affair against another god, the other god can punish the moral by warping the hobby into a punishment. I feel like the punishment should be for the god who cheated, not the mortal. Well, I didn't make the call on that. I direct you to the god who made that rule so you can vent your grievance to them, but they're all hiding right now. I'm the only god who's willing to be a public figure. My religious sect is super cool with me talking about how I'm a god. Some of them want me to make the earth shape like my head, but I figure that's a bit too opulent. Yeah. It seems the green girl's hobby is getting mad at Broly for blowing stuff up. That's not really a hobby. Also, if you get mad when you're doing your hobby, that's not a hobby. What about playing a frustrating video game? You know what? Point taken. Anyway, what does she do in her off time to relax? Well, honestly, uh... Pickpocketing. She's good at pickpocketing. So her off time is stealing stuff. Well, yeah. I guess it sounds bad when you say it like that. Okay, what's her name, though? Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea. I could look it up online, but I feel like that's cheating. That is true. It is cheating. Alright, let's just move on to the next one. Spy Family. This anime is so charming and sweet. It's got a spy who must learn to be a dad. What's his name? Well, we don't know the name he was given at birth, but we do know his codename is Twilight and his alias is Lloyd Forger. Isn't the name Forger giving away that it's a fake name? I mean, yeah, but it's better than what his name was for the tennis match. 
It was him and his partner, and they called themselves the Phonies. Yeah, I guess Voyager is a better name in that case. Yeah, so basically there's a government leader he's got to convince not to do a war, but the problem is that he's very reclusive and doesn't like to talk to people. It's kind of weird that a politician has bad social skill. I think he was appointed by the government for being so incredibly smart. Oh, well, I guess that makes more sense than the country voting in a guy who doesn't talk to people. Okay, anyway, the only thing they know for sure is that he has two sons that go to school. So the plan the super elite spy society has is to have their most elite spy raise a child and have them be friends with the leader's son. That's gonna take a while considering you need nine months just to make a baby. Probably gonna take even longer just to get them ready for school. Well, don't worry, I have good news. There's these places where they'll just give you a kid. You mean an orphanage? Yes, one of those. Now Lloyd's gotta find a kid who's smart enough to get into the same school as the children of the nation's leaders. Well, that would be... difficult, too. Why doesn't Lloyd just give up? Because they fortunately had a little girl named Anya who was very smart. How did she get so smart? Well, Anya's telepathic, so she just reads the minds of whatever adult is thinking near her since they usually have the right answer. Well, that's gotta be difficult for Lloyd, especially since he's a spy. Oh yeah, Anya figured out Lloyd's a spy real fast. But she thinks it's cool since she watches spy cartoons. Hey, that's what we're doing when we watch the spy family spy cartoon. Wait, are we Anya? Well, do your god powers include telepathy? No. No? Yeah, no. I am definitely not reading your mind right now. Am I capable of reading everyone's mind at the same time? Unlike Anya, who can only read one person's mind at a time without getting confused. Off topic, the Church of Supremacy would totally be happy to accept you into my phone. The best part is that we don't have sermons or anything. We just have huge buffets all the time outside. Wow, I was just thinking about joining the Church of Shiv Premacy and also eating food. How thoughtful of you. Wait, wouldn't an outside buffet attract all sorts of bugs and such? Shrike goddess, remember? Oh, right. I also made it so you don't have to get up to get to the buffet. Just hold out your hand, think of what you want to eat, and the food will appear in your hand. This isn't just for the buffets the Church of Supremacy holds, either. I'm trying to do it so there's no hunger for anyone. So, I can only have it set up so anyone can hold out their hands and get free food whenever they want. Well, won't that kill the restaurant industry? Well, yeah, it would if we didn't already move past the need for money. Only capitalism on the planet is our clothing industry, and that's mainly because we don't want to stifle creativity in the production of clothing, so people have better choices on what they want to wear. Anyway, we were talking about Spy Family? Oh, right. I should probably talk about the rest of the family. Um, the mom is secretly an assassin, and I'm very excited for the anime to start the volleyball saga. Yeah, the volleyball saga just started about a year and a half ago. I'm excited to see all the cool volleyball tricks you all can do in the anime. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Did you see how she threw that kid in the air right before getting hit by a car, shaking off the collision and grabbing the kid out of midair before jumping over four cars and a trolley? Yeah, that was nuts! Hopefully we can get it so that the next volleyball match happens soon. Maybe Lloyd and Anya will show up to cheer on. Don't forget that the dog has to be there. Yes, the dog is a very good boy and I hope he's living his best life 24-7. If living his best life involves attending volleyball matches, so be it. We forgot to talk about the dog. Let's do that more. Okay, well, the dog's name is Bond. Like James Bond? Yeah, but Anya picked his name when she saw his paws were black and her favorite TV character, Bond Man, has black gloves. I never understood naming pets. Well, what do you refer to your pets as? Oh, I never had a pets. In a way, though, aren't we your pets? You need to have a better self-image if you think you're my pet. Also, what do you mean by we? I hope nobody else is seeing me as a shark god mommy. Well, think about it. You already went through a whole thing to take care of the planet for no real reason other than to make us happy. In a way, we're kind of like your pets. Okay, that's done for a couple reasons. 
One, that means I'd have to regularly get all of the Earth's population sent to a veterinarian. And I don't want to pay those medical bills. Second, you know you're not an animal, right? Well, I just played Final Fantasy XIII, and they were talking about how the gods there treat humans like they're pets. Remember what Spoonie said? Final Fantasy XIII is a bad game. Besides, that was supposed to be a whole thing about how Faded Destiny might be bad. If people are owning other people and calling them their pets, you might want to call someone about that. But you already got rid of the cops. That's right. Since I ended all suffering, there was no crime whatsoever. We don't need cops if there was no crime. Also, money doesn't exist except for clothes. So any police officer would be paid exclusively in clothes. Yeah, most cops want to be paid in money rather than shirts. So, anything we're missing from Spy Family? Well, we already did all the Forger family. What about Yui? Oh, right, I forgot about Yuri. He's kind of boring, really. Most of his story is about his relationship with his sister. Apparently he became invincible after eating a bunch of his sister's horrible cooking. He'll get hit by a bus and walk away with some disheveled clothing. So he has a thing for his sister? I think it was that she was the only family Yuri had, and Yor treated him like a mother since he was just a baby when their parents died. That's sad. Well, the whole anime takes place after a great war where a bunch of people died. The goal of the anime is to keep two neighboring countries from fighting. Oh wait, that's a good summary of the show. Let's move on to the next one. Rosary plus Vampire. Well, there sure is a lot of bad in this show. Why did you watch it? Well, it's not exactly good. But the problem was that people didn't really understand what anime fans wanted back when they made this. So they only dubbed things they figured would appeal to horny teenagers who had access to Netflix during its early streaming years. So pretty much all the anime that Netflix streamed for a while was absolute trash. Okay, there must have been some good things. Honestly, the amount of trashy smut anime completely overshadowed any anime that was actually good. Even the good stuff like Orin High School Host Club and Black Butler still had some sex appeal to it. Well, did they fix it so there's more than just trash anime on there? Yeah, they did. There ended up being more good anime than trash anime on Netflix after a decade or so as a streaming platform. That is way too long to get decent anime. Yeah, but what could they do about it? It was 2009. How are they going to get anime when Americans were still using the panty vending machine stereotype back then? Oh right, I forgot that Netflix was created back when humans were the top species. Yep, and now all humans evolved into tiny astronauts that pick up your trash for you. And Netflix has evolved to be very anime-focused. Did you hear Netflix is now developing an anime where a young squid gets hit by a tram and ends up in the human world? They even have the top experts of human to tell us how their civilization worked back then? Did you know that they didn't have split matches to settle differences back then? Well, how did they resolve their differences? Boy. Just a lot of boy going on all the time back then. Thank goodness you used your god powers to stop all the wars. What? That wasn't me. That was a new Squid Beak Splatoon. And you're part of the new Squid Beak Splatoon. You know how I wasn't there when Captain Cuttlefish ended the wars, right? Yeah, but you did save my grandpa, so I consider you a savior in some ways. Um, sure, I guess. Let's just move on to the next anime on the list before I get more confused. Alright. Kenshi, the Mightiest Disciple. Another trash anime I watched because Netflix didn't have any good anime at the time. Still confused why that one girl was so dead set on always wearing glasses in school. Yeah, that was weird. It did have some good fights. Some of the fights were really good, but that doesn't really excuse the fact that they didn't even finish the story. What do you mean? They fought the big bad and won. Yeah, but then they teased the even bigger bad at the end of the show, and they didn't have any sort of fight with him. So yet another anime that is incomplete. That's not big news. Basically, every anime is complete. I really hope that once One Piece finishes, we'll see more animes get finished. 
You mean after we dig the rest of the One Piece anime's footage out of the ruins of mankind, right? Right, right. That's what I meant. Definitely. Also, considering the One Piece manga takes up 60% of our time digging through the past civilization of humanity, there might be some old anime hard drives that we're not noticing. Hey, couldn't you just use your god powers to get all the animes out of the rubble of civilization's past with a snap of your fingers? Yeah, but it kind of ruins the search if I just use my unfathomable god power to get everything out of there. Everybody loves it when a new chapter of a manga they're reading finally comes out of the rubble. People read it and discuss what will happen in the next chapter. I don't want to spoil that. Fair enough. Hopefully we find that Ensemble Star's Attack of the 50-Foot Maui movie we found that poster for. Yeah, that certainly looked interesting for a 2035 over. I like how the poster said there was at least three different song and dance numbers with Mayoi in it. Hopefully they're not all when he's 50 feet. Just the footwork alone would be enough to cause buildings to collapse, not even looking into when he waves his arms around. I do like the one clip we have where Mayoi lifts up his little hat and we see some girl with purple hair and glasses living in his hat Ratatouille style. Can we please get back to the list? I'm a bit uncomfortable talking about a giant Mayoi ISA. Besides, I thought we would only talk about anime we've watched. Okay, what's next on the list? Da, da, da. Agretzko. Okay, so this show is basically the start of when Netflix learned that people like anime. It's weird they got the people who made Hello Kitty to make an anime about an overworked office lady and her death metal hobby. Yeah, but I did like the fact that she slowly becomes more open about her skills with death metal. Weird how the series just kind of stops. I feel like we have a lot of missing details, like, is she ever going to leave a job? Or can that purple cat go get her own series? Pretty sure that Shikabane is a skunk. It doesn't matter if she's a cat or a skunk. I just want to know what her life will be like now that she's not living in that internet cafe. Well, they show her apartment hunting, so I think the implication is that she's trying to get a place to stay. Whether or not that purple skunk ends up having a social life is her decision. Ooh, what if she does an ASMR channel? You know, you could just make a Shikabani show. She entered the public domain thousands of years ago. Yeah, but all the stuff we talked about is in the public domain. You can make an anime where all those animes can come together in a single anime. I mean, I guess so? No, you're the one confusing me. So let's just move on. Okay, Pop Team Epic. It is a funny show. Alright, moving on. Love is... wait, that's it? I mean, yeah, it's comedy. You can't really talk about comedy without talking about the jokes. I figure we wait another 10 years and see what Pop Team Epic means come out then. Because we just pulled the Pop Team Epic anime out of the rubble a few years ago, right? Right. We have to give the general populace time to watch the anime before we can talk to them about it without spoiling all the jokes. Okay, let's move on to Love is War, aka Kaguya-sama. Good show, but I'm wondering when they'll play Among Us. They'll get to Among the United States soon, don't worry. That's not what the game is called. It doesn't matter. Let's just move on to the next one. But I want to talk about the relationship. Well, the show's mainly a comedy, so we'd be ruining the show for most people if we spoiled jokes. But we could talk about all the relationships for all the characters. Yeah, but I feel like that's a big part of what the anime is shooting for where they have every character be tsundere for each other and ending with each of them trying to get the other one to say that they like them. Except Chika, who isn't very smart when it comes to relationships. Moe, you just said what's in the show. Sorry, Shiver. I just needed to talk about the series a bit. Let's move on before I say any more of the characters' names. Dog and Scissors. This is an anime for people attracted to Sato Darius and absolutely nobody else. It's weird that the show ends with a drunken fantasy where the main girl character marries a dog. I feel like the main guy character should be shipped with the main girl character after they figure out how to transform him back into a human. 
Yeah, but how are you gonna get a reincarnated soul back into their bodies? Can't you do it? Yeah, I can do it in the real world since I'm the Shrike Goddess, but I can't do it in a fictional reality. I could create a world based on that reality and hook the main character's guy's soul into the reincarnation system of an afterlife, but then I'd have a whole universe I had to take care of. I'd rather just stick to this planet for now, and see how things go. After a while, if things are still okay, I feel like I can take on more responsibility. I'll look into creating more Shiva universe based on fictional reality and see how it goes. Ooh, maybe you could just make one universe and base a bunch of planets on different animes. Yeah, but I wouldn't be able to put any animes set in space since the anime planet could find each other, and I wouldn't know if I want to do crossovers. I know people are saying there's aliens in One Piece, and while that might be true, I don't want the aliens to be the cat planet cuties or something. Yeah, alright. Next one. Food Wars. Pretty good. Makes me want to drink a milkshake for breakfast. Care to explain why? No, but I will let you know there's a guy who spends most of his time watering his garden while only wearing a Speedo, so that's pretty cool. Cool. Due to the fact that he's confident enough in his body to keep his clothes off, or body temperature cool since he's particularly naked when he's gardening. Yes to both of them. Okay, so you watched the whole series. No, but I consider season 4 is when the series ended. There's a time skip for season 5, and it's widely known that the story completely falls off the tracks in season 5. They should have just ended the show at season 4, just like The Simpsons. The Simpsons didn't end at season 4. We just haven't found the rest of the episodes. Well, I still say season 5 was bad. Well, you're definitely entitled to that opinion. Hopefully The Simpsons is good after season 4. We'll know once we get more stuff out of the rubble. I don't know, was The Simpsons a popular show? I know that it's catching on in this time, but we still don't know if it was popular back then. Hopefully we'll see a lot more seasons, presumably with all of them just as good as the episodes we currently have. In fact, season 1 was kind of a rough start, so I'm certain that things will start getting good around... Hold on, let me do some calculations here. The Simpsons should start getting really good once Season 9, Episode 2 hits. Yes, I'm certain that Season 9, Episode 2 will be the greatest Simpsons episode of all time. Okay, but I'm pretty sure that you just powered that number out of nowhere. No, I got it from the calculator. Please, I'm the Shrike Goddess. You think I don't know when somebody is randomly typing numbers into a calculator? Plus, there's a mirror behind you and I could totally see your hands. Could you please, on to the next anime? I'm just gonna use my god's power to erase this whole thing from my mind so I don't want to spend the rest of this podcast in a sour mood. Remove what from our minds? I... I... don't know. Um, let's just move on. Well, the next on the list is... Uh, Odd Taxi. Weird about how the series end. Yeah, I heard there was a movie that explained what happens better, but I don't think the dub is out yet. Um, you mean we haven't found it, right? Oh, right. I keep forgetting we're in the future. Well, when you're talking about stuff from the early 2000s and late 19s, you forget where you are in time. Well, I don't think that's actually true, but whatever. Let's just move on to the next anime. <laughs> We're just constantly moving on to the next anime on the list, aren't we? Well, yeah, this piece of paper is heavy. A single piece of paper isn't heavy. Well, yeah, for a god like you. Alright, let's move on. Soul Eater. Also known as the only truly good anime in Netflix's early catalog. Wasn't Naruto in there? Yeah, but I stopped watching it after the tournament arc and Naruto beat up the sand guy. We heard that the final arc is mainly about the main character staying at home, drinking milk into the final battle. Oh, wait, are you talking about Soul Eater or Naruto? Soul Eater, remember? You didn't watch Naruto? I know, but I thought we were talking about Naruto for a second there. Whatever, back to Soul Eater. I like how Death the Kid is obsessed with symmetry. How did Death have a son anyway? 
Dunno. They never showed his mom. He has an older brother that wasn't in the anime, though. You got that from the Soul Eater wiki, didn't you? Well, yeah, but it's impressive that we managed to maintain every fan wiki for millions of years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's why they're awesome. They sure are, alright. Next one. Mob Psycho 100. Season 2 was the best of the three seasons. Why? Can't say why because spoilers. Alright, we'd better move on to the next one right away. Assassination Classroom. I like it. All the characters are completed at the end of the anime. They ended up telling the whole story. Some of these series just end at a midpoint we never hear from them again. Just like Dead Man Wonderland. Oops, I forgot to add Dead Man Wonderland to the list. Well, it was an okay anime. Too bad they never finished it. I find it hilarious, though, that they never showed the ending. Now you either have to read the manga to find out all the mysteries or read the Wikipedia page. Yeah, it's weird since most of the show is just, Ooh, such mysterious mysteries. Who killed the class? What caused the earthquake? Why are most of the people in this universe so stupid? Well, the last one isn't exactly true. I think they were just written to be stupid because Tokyo blew up and everybody is regularly on edge 24-7. Why did the mom grab a single potted plant during the earthquake instead of helping her daughter, and then run straight into the earthquake's path instead of doing literally anything else? Well, it's because they were written so that the daughter felt betrayed and willing to do anything it took to survive in the prison. Then they can do the thing where you think the little girl is innocent in the episode. She shows her true color in the end. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say this show kind of sucks and we need a remake to fix all the problems and finish the story. Maybe just have the show brush past that twist in the first few minutes of the little girl's introduction, then have it be where she completes her character arc by having her hair cut at the end of that episode. That way we can get to all the characters from the manga the original anime left out. Well, it's all public domains anyway, so we could just make a new anime. Good thing they made the series millions of years ago so the copyright wore out. It sure is great that we're living millions of years in the future. Okay, this next one is kind of long. Life with an ordinary guy who reincarnated into a total fantasy knockout. I'm rooting for the two leads to figure out what they want from their relationship. I think their whole relationship is that they're best friends and one of them became a girl. I'm pretty sure it's gonna end with both of them back on Earth. Things are exactly the same as before, only one of them is now a girl. Seems pretty simple to me. There's also a lot of subtext that says they were pretty close to each other before they got isekai So it's not like anything is that different. I like to imagine they use the new body for some internet stuff. Pretty sure top tier OnlyFans members get paid a lot more than a lowly salary man position in Japan. Well, for now they're just trying to get back home. Can't wait for the next season, which will hopefully come out at some point. Unlike Dead Man Wonderland, where the studio went bankrupt and disappeared from existence forever. Kind of dyke, just gonna move on to the next one. So is at work. You know, it's weird, because it has that inside-out problem where it's hard to tell if human beings have free will or not. What do you mean? We see the season 1 finale where it shows that there's doctor and stuff on the outside of the body. Of course that person has free will. Yeah, but then in Code Black we see that the body is headed by a council of people who control the body's brain, so... I don't know what qualifies for what. Hopefully we get season 2 of Code Black, where they explain this stuff better, but I doubt it since season 1 was bleak and season 2 would be even bleaker. Yeah, the first was just about the body's unhealthy practices leading to all kinds of problems. The body nearly dies for a minute when a heart attack happens and there's a hope spot after the ordeal where it looks like the body learned its lesson and is attempting to eat healthy foods. But then there's a blood transfusion into a cancer victim and the show only gets bleaker from there. Why did they think it's a good idea for a blood transfusion to occur between a guy who just had a heart attack and a cancer patient? These are all good questions that nobody has the answer to. So let's just move on to the next one. Go and log it. I like it, but I shouldn't tell anyone why it's good. This is a show you'll have to see for yourself. Okay then. We won't talk about it. Not even about Ro Ro Fight the Power. We're not talking about Ro Ro Fight the Power? 
Yes, we're not going to talk about Row Row Fight the Power. Okay, we're not going to talk about Row Row Fight the Power. Yes, we just got into the next anime we'll talk about without mentioning Row Row Fight the Power. Kaiji, it's basically Squid Game but better. My favorite game was their version of the glass bridge. Instead of the super elaborate 50-50 shot at the beginning of the white tile, this is just an electrified beam across the top of two skyscrapers. The trick is to get to the other side without falling off the building. Weird that your favorite game is only the third one in the first season. Well, they still haven't made a season 3, but I've been told that it's because the first game after season 2 is just Mahjong. And there's not a big audience of anime fans who play Mahjong. Couldn't they just make the Mahjong game the first episode and then get to the more fun stuff after the Mahjong game? They could, but I don't know if they want to skip through any of the details of the game. Yeah, but they could quickly pull out all the details of the Mahjong match. That'd be interesting. Well, we can have this back and forth between us, but neither of us have the power to make a season 3. I'm just a god. I can't make an entire anime studio. I could probably work with my sister to get a season 3 made. She has a lot of connections to different animation studios, so that'll help. Okay, I'll be very happy to see if you make it. Alright, final entry in the list. The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Good show, but I really wish that they just told Haruhi she's a god. Maybe they told her at the end of the light novel, but they never finished the anime because of that whole Endless Eight nonsense. Yeah, it's much easier just to tell people they're a god than keeping it a secret from them. I mean, look at me. I know I'm a shark goddess and we just kicked a space bear off the planet. Wait. Did you create the space bear with your god powers? No, it's a space bear. I'm only a god on this planet. That's why I wasn't able to stop the giant space laser that would make everyone a furry by itself. The most I could do was support Agent 3 and move the continents so the blast would hit the ocean. Then it turned out that the blast would have affected everyone, even if it was only hit the ocean. You know, I probably should have figured that out considering what the space bear was saying. But I'm only a god, you know. I'm not perfect. Hopefully you moving the continents didn't cause any chain reactions. Well, I just used my god powers so that didn't happen. I put them all back after we took out the space laser. Don't worry. Also, nobody on Earth should mind that the planet changed for a few minutes. After all, a good amount of them are worshippers of me anyway. Well, it looks like it's time that where well, we say it's time to end the podcast. Thanks to everyone who listened to this. Are we doing another one? Eh, I don't think so. I think I'll just stick to podcasting with my sister for a while. Go listen to all our Merry After Midnight episodes, all you inklings out there. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know if I want to be on another podcast. This is all way too late for me. I like to be able to sleep by midnight. How does a god get tired? Well, sometimes a humble shark goddess like myself gets tired from all the hustle and bustle of god work. Okay, well, thank you to all of our listeners and a huge shout out to our sponsors. Even if all of our payment is just shoes, hats, and various other clothing options. I might look into getting some new threads myself. I also wanted to give a big shout out to Deep Cut for letting Shiver be on here. Sorry if there was some confusion when Big Man decided to hang out with us. I hope there wasn't any bad blood between the three of you. There was, but now that's all water under the bridge. We forgave Big Man, and he forgave us. So, we're all good. Alright, I'm glad to know that. Anyway, I will see you next week for a new podcast with Callie. See you later, and remember... Stay, stay fresh! fresh.